Under the reign of Pharaoh Hatshepsut, ancient Egypt observed a time of great prosperity during the mid-15th century BC. Content with his position under the female pharaoh, her stepson and rightful heir to the throne, Thutmose III, spent his youth establishing himself as a highly capable military tactician and commander. On Hatshepsut's passing, Thutmose ascended the throne as the sole ruler of Egypt and went on to expand the empire to new limits. Thutmose III, whose name means born of the god Thoth, was born in 1481 BC to Pharaoh Thutmose II and his lesser wife Iset. When his father died, then three-year-old Thutmose was considered too young to rule, thus his aunt and stepmother Hatshepsut assumed the role of regent. Seven years into her regency, Hatshepsut declared herself pharaoh and seized control of the empire. Thutmose III was sent to accompany the army on early campaigns commissioned by Hatshepsut, a common practice to prepare young heirs for command. Once Thutmose became of age, Hatshepsut appointed him head of Egypt's armies. Upon Hatshepsut's death in 1458 BC, Thutmose III became the sixth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty and immediately began planning the restoration of Egyptian hegemony in the surrounding regions. Following his stepmother's death, the kings of the Levant rebelled, threatening to either invade Egypt or turn their backs on the empire altogether. Thutmose, too skilled a commander to allow this to happen, was uninterested in negotiating with the rebels. He personally led an army to the city of Megiddo, located in modern-day Israel, better known by its Greek name, Armageddon. Thutmose and his men laid siege to Megiddo for seven months, starving its residents into submission and forcing them to surrender. The Battle of Megiddo is considered to be the first battle in history that was recorded in a reliable manner. The pharaoh's campaigns were documented by scribes who traveled with the army and chronicled the events in a collection of inscriptions referred to as the Annals of Thutmose III. A record of the spoils of war from the battle includes 340 captives, 22,500 sheep, 2,238 horses, 929 cattle, 924 chariots, 502 bows, and 200 suits of armor. The Megiddo campaign was a major political success, giving Egypt control over all of northern Canaan and drastically improving the empire's standing in the Near East. The Assyrian, Babylonian, and Hittite kings, among other rulers from surrounding regions, offered tributary gifts to the Egyptian pharaoh, commemorating his great victory. The pharaoh commander repeatedly proved his might, with successful campaigns in Nubia, in Phoenician ports, in the valuable trade center of Kadesh, and in the kingdom of Mitanni. As a result, Thutmose III secured more territory than any other pharaoh, ultimately controlling Egypt's largest empire ever. Thutmose's eighth campaign was in the kingdom of Mitanni, a Hurrian-speaking state with an Indo-Aryan ruling class. As a result, he became the first pharaoh since his grandfather Thutmose I to cross the Euphrates River. He commemorated the crossing by placing a stele next to the one his grandfather had erected several decades earlier. After encountering little resistance, Thutmose III returned to the Levant, where he collected further tributes and engaged in an elephant hunt before heading back to Egypt victorious. Thutmose's final campaign came in his 50th regnal year, when he attacked Nubia, taking his invading army further south than that of any previous pharaoh. Considered a military genius by Egyptologists, Thutmose III went on to conduct a total of 17 major campaigns and captured 350 cities, conquering much of the Near East from the Euphrates to Nubia. The Egyptian armies heavily plundered the cities they conquered, making their pharaoh the richest man in the world at the time. The pharaoh often sent the sons of conquered rulers to Egypt to be educated at court, hoping to acclimate them to Egyptian culture and gain their sympathies before sending them back to rule as puppet kings. More is known about Thutmose III than most other Egyptian rulers, largely thanks to his royal scribe, 
Thanuni, who wrote extensively about his reign and conquests. A large part of the pharaoh's success is attributed to the improvements in military technology made several centuries earlier after the Hyksos invasion that conquered Egypt using superior weaponry, such as horse-drawn chariots and sickle swords called kopeshes. The Egyptians learned to create and use these weapons for themselves, helping them dominate their enemies. The pharaoh's artists produced some of the finest work in ancient Egypt's history including elaborate tombs decorated with intricate paintings and fine detail. Advancements in artistic techniques and experimentation were also widespread under the warrior pharaoh's reign. Although glass making was nothing new by then, it was perfected to a level that enabled crafters to create glass drinking vessels. Statues were made in a more realistic style during this era in contrast to the traditional idolized style found during the Old Kingdom and Middle Kingdom periods. Statues of Thutmose III depict a tall, handsome man in excellent physical shape and are considered to be a realistic portrayal due to their consistency. There were also monuments of impressive scale, such as large freestanding columns, pylons, and obelisks at Karnak. The most famous of these being the Lateran Obelisk, the largest Egyptian obelisk in the world. Future 4th century Roman Emperor Constantius II had the colossal obelisk shipped via the Nile and through the Mediterranean to Rome, where it remains in front of the Lateran Palace to this day. Thutmose III loved nature, encouraging the creation of public parks and gardens, as well as lakes and ponds for the people's leisure and enjoyment. The pharaoh himself had private gardens both around his own palace and at Karnak. Thutmose commissioned a tomb for himself that was typical of 18th dynasty tombs, featuring two stairways and two corridors that provided access to a vestibule. Inside is a complete version of an Amduat, an important New Kingdom funerary text that tells the story of the Egyptian sun god Ra and his nightly journey through the underworld. It was believed that the dead pharaoh would take the same journey, ultimately reaching immortality by becoming one with Ra. Thutmose III is commonly associated with defacing the monuments of his stepmother and predecessor, Hatshepsut. After her death, many monuments and depictions built in her honor were desecrated or destroyed, including those in her grand mortuary temple complex. Some believe that Thutmose was trying to erase her memory out of spite for usurping the throne. However, the vandalism didn't begin until around the 46th year of Thutmose's reign, when he was quite elderly. Any resentment from Thutmose towards Hatshepsut is weakly supported, and it is unlikely that she would have made him head of her armies if there had been. Recent theories suggest that the purpose of destroying Hatshepsut's monuments was actually to ensure a smooth succession for Thutmose's son and heir, Amenhotep II. Any surviving relatives of Hatshepsut would have had an equal or better claim to the throne, but without evidence of her reign, Amenhotep II could more easily defend his assertion of power. Whatever the reason, the long-held idea that Thutmose attempted to erase Hatshepsut from history out of vengeance is unfounded. Yet the theory often persists as a dark stain on his otherwise impressive legacy. Some Egyptologists liken Thutmose III to Napoleon Bonaparte, referring to him as the Napoleon of Egypt. However, unlike Napoleon, Thutmose remained undefeated in battle and managed to maintain all the territories he conquered. Thutmose III died in 1425 BC, after ruling Egypt for more than 53 years and became the third pharaoh to ever be buried in the Valley of the Kings, located on the west bank of the Nile River near the city of Thebes. The Valley of the Kings would eventually contain the mummies of over 60 New Kingdom pharaohs from Egypt's 18th, 19th and 20th dynasties. Through immense bravery and unparalleled military genius, Thutmose III transformed ancient Egypt into a powerful empire, both highly respected and feared throughout the ancient world. Consider liking, commenting, subscribing, and clicking the bell icon for more videos like this. Also, please consider using the links below to visit the History Explained merchandise shop and Patreon page to help speed up the creation of new videos. Thank you.